Good morning and welcome to In and Out of Character, a role player's podcast. Thank you so much for being here with me today. New listeners, welcome. Old listeners, hey, it's good to see you for, hear from you again. See you again. One of those things. Today I'm talking to Isai, who is the creator of a sport in World of Warcraft called Jet In. And it's a really cool story about how this happened. I'm working on like a little documentary about it right now. But uh, they created Jet In as a um, as just like a little bit of a sport between her and her friends, and it got so popular that another one of their uh, one of the players who went to work at Blizzard actually made it canon in the game. As far as I understand it, I might be wrong on the fine details, but more or less that's what happened. I'm just super excited that I got to talk to them because I reached out to them over on Tumblr and they got back to me. It just It's just so thrilling to finally be able to talk to people about this awesome, lovely hobby that we have. Uh, anyways, uh, enough rambling for me. Let's let's bring them in. Oh, well, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I, I'm so excited to jo- uh, talk to you because... Not every day do you get to talk to somebody who came up with a, a sport that was made canonized in a game. Uh, yeah, yeah, it actually caught me by surprise as well. Um, considering that, you know, I came up with it just for the sake of friends, uh, Draenei players, because back in the ye old days, uh, Draenei were actually not very popular, so I wanted to bring attention to them. And it kind of snowballed into its own animal, and from there, yeah, canonized. I can't believe the words Draenei weren't popular were uttered. I never imagined Draenei weren't popular. I thought Draenei were like one of the most popular races to, um, at least, well, maybe not to roleplay as, but to like, I thought they were very popular, actually. They are more recently, but back in the day, especially when Burning Crusade first came out, there was actually very little lore on the Draenei. Um, this was still back in Warcraft into Burning Crusade. We knew very, very little, so the Draenei didn't really have a lot to work with. So that's probably one of the reasons for their lack of popularity. Uh, role players, especially, they love to have something very solid to role play with. And when you have something that's a little more wishy-washy, especially the early days, the early years of Draenei, it kind of left them on the wayside a little bit. Especially when Blood Elves first came out, they were far more popular. I say as I didn't roll I didn't uh, roll a Blood Elf myself. <laughs> no, I also no, I did roll Blood Elf myself at one point, but um I started off my role playing experience with a human um but when the Draenei came around I, I quickly switched sides to Jenna. My effect, I ha- still have the same character that I've had since Burning Crusade, and I still roleplay her. Um, her name is Infinity, and uh, she's a Draenei shaman. And I, I loved the Draenei. I thought they were very cool. But yeah, you're right. There was very little lore on them other than refugees from distant, distant planet. Right, from a distant planet that, if you looked it up at the time, didn't have very much lore, except this is where the Draenei came from. And yeah. they escaped this planet, and now they're... Uh, you know, they're here. Good luck. <laughs> Make something with that, I guess. And so I just wanted to bring something to the community because I love the Draenei. Um, I still do. I still have a very soft spot for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just kind of wanted something simple that people could play with quickly, with easy rules, and could fit in with the Draenei physiology. Because mm-hmm. as a role player, I do love how different the species look, and I do like making little head cannons and things like that in relation to their morphology physiology for the draenei the obvious thing was of course a sumer type of sport where they could kind of hit each other i love that that it sounds it sounds like when you put it down on paper it's like okay but then when you actually see it happen it's so much different because i went out and i did the quest for it Mm -hmm. that's how i knew about it my and then my uh guest was like hey have you heard of this thing and I was like, D- no, was that uh, originally a thing? And then they made it, uh, then they made it into an actual quest and yeah, it blew my daily. mind. Mm-hmm. Did they ever actually reach out to you about that? They did actually when at the time I was, um, I had a, a developer friend um, 
and she actually pitched it to Blizzard on my behalf. Oh. And it was actually originally going to be for Warlords of Draenor. But they weren't able to squeeze it in in time. And I thought that was the end of it. I'm like, okay, well, it, it, it had its moment. It came and went. I'm just going to continue with my life. Yeah. And then I was reached out again before Legion for, I think, in the beginning of saying, hey, we're going to be adding um, Jirin. And they didn't really kind of like brought me in, but I was kind of like a background kind of reference mm -hmm. uh, for some specific details and things like that. And apparently the developers really liked it. And I I can remember a quote. It was something along the lines of, I don't want to resolve any dispute that doesn't end up in Jadid. Right. <laughs> and I. It, and it was funny because as it was being developed and there were hints and it actually came out in game, there were like friends were reaching out to like, oh my God, did you know this? They added your game in, the, in World of Warcraft. I'm like, oh no, wow, this is such a surprise. Oh, wow. Oh, Who wow. could have seen it coming? Oh. <laughs> yeah, so it got me on got it. How how did you okay so I want to I want to know how you got into World of Warcraft role play but how did you get into role play just like the concept of role play in general Oh God I'm gonna give up my age here So back in the early 1900s Oh boy uh, <laughs> uh, We uh, no it's a little bit more Yeah no my God no <gasps> it was We're talking about like aim chat Back in the day we had to like hook up the oh. modem. Yeah, the I off, yeah, that. back then the the first little chat. So aim chat, and then through form role play, your typical you know teenage mm -hmm. fantasy role play. Thank God it died. With the forums, you will never find it. You are never gonna find these logs. Yeah, <laughs> I know. God. Oh man, somewhere in the deepest <laughs> reaches yes. of the internet, there is a <laughs> forum that I used to role play on oh. that was probably the most cringiest thing in existence. Yep. And I'm glad it's gone. I'm glad right. it's buried. <laughs> you better Dead. take out a shovel <laughs> and start digging if you want that information because mm -hmm. it's gone. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But we all have to start somewhere. And of course you start with cringe and you kind of work your way up. That's true, uh. that is very true. <laughs> and then I got into um, uh, Predator. You know the 1987 movie Predator? Yeah. There was a forum for that, and I got into that kind of role play, which, funny enough, I still continue uh, on and off with a friend. But through there, I met another friend, and he played World of Warcraft, and he introduced me to World of Warcraft in 2006. And I really liked it. My first MMO, my first, like, real big video game. And I just played since. I got really into the lore, into the characters, and my first introduction to role play through World of Warcraft. Um, yeah, very cringe as well. You know, I, very, very needlessly drama filled as you tend ooh, to start with. Ooh, yeah, I, I want you to know somewhere. my first role play character was a character named Sylvia Star Tempest. He was a human mm -hmm. shaman, and everyone hated that. So many people hated that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I get it. But, like, why can't humans be shamans? And everyone's like, but they're not shamans in the game. And you can't be a shaman. You can't play a shaman. <laughs> oh, the like, lore oh, police. I remember that. Everyone had uh, to deal with the lore police in one way or uh, another. And I'm just like, bro, please just let me play my stupid character. And then the Draenei came out. And I was like, you know what? That solves my problems. I will just make a Draenei shaman. Make a Draenei, yeah. Mine was, oh my god, was named, I still have her, a troll warrior named Mace 2, and uh, she was a troublemaker. And I mean, I was the kind of player, I admit, that would go out to look for trouble, because it brought me attention. I was, I I was that agree. person. I was that person. And I can safely say that now, because I grew from that. We are going to be best friends. Mm-hmm. We all I start somewhere. A, I, was, I was pretty much the exact same way, because I, I remember... I remember trying to just, I just, I didn't want to make trouble. I just wanted to be there, if that makes sense. And, but because yeah. I was there, I would, <sighs> I just wasn't a very smart person at the time. Right. And, I think in and, our lack of, of experience, we probably didn't know how to introduce role play, how to just continue a storyline. And at least from my perspective, it's a matter of, if something happens, if I make something happen, then people will react to it. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's what role play was. Um, I one of the things that I really got into when I was role playing was I 
I don't know if you're the same way. When I started role playing, I tried really hard to make people understand my character, and I try a lot less now to make people understand my character. Like I'll just let the, I'll let the flow of the narration tell the story. Uh, so were, you, than, were you the monologuer? You'd meet someone and immediately like just dump all the information. Yes, <laughs> yes, precisely. Oh my god, I was so oh, bad about that, dude. Oh, I, I used, used to, to do that too. Oh uh, god, all it took was someone we should going. Please change this hey. to out of cringe. Uh, it's all review. Uh, our bad role play days. Oh my goodness. Well, where where do you sit now in in role play? Like, how where where have you been lately? Oh my god, I've actually tried um Redem. So I played Red Dead Redemption. Uh-huh. I got into Red Dead Online with some friends, and I had a posse and everything. And I actually tried the role play version of the 5M, which is the Red M for Red Dead uh-huh. Redemption, which is voice acting. Oh, that's so cool. I, it I heard is about, an I've, entirely different animal. My goodness. I, I bet I bet it is, because I've been so curious. Because one of the things I want to do with my uh, channel is I want to actually do like a, a, document, uh, a documentary on um grand theft auto roleplay like how that got started and like how that works in comparison to the other forms of roleplay because that is so wild because people are actually like voicing it out homie yeah. i i love mm-hmm. telling a story i love telling a story but i get and I, i'm very extroverted but when it comes to when it comes to like voicing out lines mm-hmm. i'm so bad at it and i get so nervous it is intimidating for the first time it is very intimidating because it is going to be your voice people are hearing it they are reacting to it and so it feels a lot more personal at the same time pros and cons to everything pro it does go much faster when you're having a dialogue versus typing it out the storylines kind of move a little fast um the negative is it does require a lot more time in order to build up a character because you know a lot of people they're into own storylines you want to build up your own as well and instead of going a little bit more down a narrow path like you would in writing, everyone has the same goal to reach kind of an end, in mm-hmm. voice role plays a lot more open. So you do kind of have to network a little bit more. Yeah, I bet you do. It's it's mm-hmm. it's compared to MMO role playing, compared to form role play man that's just a that is a whole new type of beast that you have to kind of work with yeah it is fun when when things start kicking and start going oh my god it is fun and you can really get into your like acting and it is oh when it really kicks it's really really good and i know i'm probably saying a lot of whole lot of nothing but i hope it through my voice you guys can tell mm-hmm. that when the going gets good it is good it is good and i have sobbed and I have laughed, and I have been pissed off, and <laughs> it just, it feels a lot more, like, personal. You can get the same thing through written dialogue in chat, and I've explored the exact same emotions through chat. Mm-hmm. I've sobbed, I've, you know, laughed at hilarious moments, I've gotten really pissed off. Oh, I know. But when you what do if... it in voice, it's like, again, it's a whole nother beast, but just I enjoyable. Bet. I bet, because, like, I, I love, okay, I'm a person, okay. Hold on. This is going to sound very embarrassing. Uh, I am a person who cries very easily at s- movies, especially children's movies. Um, well, they build I, it for that. That's not fair. <laughs> I love, like, I I love watching movies with my son. But I guarantee mm-hmm. you, like, at the end of the movie, I'm probably going to cry a little bit. I don't know why. I just do. I I get all nice and touchy and feely inside. It's okay. And you can same... say Pixar. You can say Pixar. Yeah, it's it's we Pixar. Uh, we uh, I, I watched Elemental with my son not too long ago. I cried at the end of that. Uh, oh, me but, too. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, and and the, like, and the father the and the daughter. And the love each other so much. And I get this way exactly with my role playing too. I don't know mm-hmm. why, but like when something really nice happens in role play, and like you can tell that the other player is genuinely putting in a lot of effort into the character, and that character is expressing genuine, um, like anything. And I'm just like, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I know, and, and, and I know Pixar's very good at that. They they've done it. They put it down to a freaking formula. Really? And but when you can get the same emotions through role play, especially when you have either another player or a bunch of players who are on the same page, the same vibe, and it just hits that emotional peak. It is chef kiss. 
<laughs> Chef kiss. Mwah. Mwah. And, like I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could do the role play thing because I can. I can just imagine or not the role play thing. I don't know if I could do the voice role playing aspect because I would like my character would be doing this thing and mm-hmm. I, I. I don't know if I was acting. It would be different, but if I have a character and that character is genuinely my character and so on and so forth, and. I get to one of those points if I'm going to be unable to keep myself from crying. <laughs> but that's good. That's what people want. They they love to hear those influxes of emotion through your voice. That wow. they manage to touch you in some way. Or you to them. Oh, God. I can't. Oh, There, there wow, is a bit of, cool. a, of, of a great feeling. Of, it's not like a bit of a power trip moment when you can make somebody else cry. Okay. Well, that's that's <laughs> that's fair. I guess that's I like, can oh, that. Yes, so Jesse. Um, I make a cry. Oh, yes. Give it to me. <laughs> so I know that you're in Red Dead Redemption uh, mm-hmm. role play right now. Are 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 you still in World of Warcraft? Uh, oh play? yes, in and out, in and out. Um, I kind of step back a little bit from from Red M, Red Dead Redemption role play because it's actually taking a lot of time. It is one of those things that if you're gonna get into, I definitely suggest give it a shot. It's fun. But it did take a lot of time. And I was like, whoa, I do not have enough time for myself, for my real life stuff in between. So I was like, okay, oh, what? Man. Like I jumped back into World of Warcraft, a lot to catch up on, et cetera. And I'm still in and out of a World of Warcraft as well. So a little bit of, of both in between. Mm-hmm. I, for, I know um, for a fact how much role play can take up, like oh, how much yeah. time it can take up. And I don't think a lot of people out there who are like, okay, so. I, I, I love my tabletop friends mm-hmm. very much. Oh, I'm also right? doing and, a Star Wars tabletop as well. Oh my god, I am spread thin. Yeah, <laughs> I, that can happen too. I, I'm in a... <laughs> besides besides for realized. doing this... Yeah, besides for doing this, I've been enjoying some Guild Wars 2 roleplay recently. I've also been trying to enjoy some World of Warcraft roleplay. Um, I mm. am also in a Dark Heresy game with my, my friends, which is awesome. Uh, has been a lot of fun so far. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, oh, what else am I in right now? Oh, I got some Elder Scrolls roleplay going on. Um, oh, God. I've been side-eyeing Baldur's Gate. And I was like, no, don't. That is the devil talking. Don't. Uh, Baldur's, <laughs> don't have Baldur's time. Gate 3? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is great. Um, I, but with no, that... Don't say that. It's, uh, okay, it's horrible. <laughs> I'm trying it's not worse. to get into it. it I don't definitely, have time. definitely oh. not, not Game of the Year nominated okay. game. Um <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> What I um with that said, I I love my people I love my friends who do strictly tabletops, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think they understand exactly how much time and how easy it is to get soaked into a role play in an MMO and how different yeah. like how vastly different that can be. Uh mm-hmm. because I've been talking to them a lot about this where MMO role playing is so easy to get if you know what you're doing. Like yeah. You and I both could log in and probably be enjoying some role play in like five minutes if mm-hmm. we just logged into World of Warcraft and went to Orgrimmar. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And you go to like the big major hubs, etc., where everyone is just kind yeah. of standing around, but they're ready yeah. to role play. Yeah, they're all ready to role play. Just, just, just send them a whisper and get started. It's, it's so, it is so incredibly easy, and because it's so incredibly easy, it can, it can just. Suck, suck the life out of you, um, mm-hmm. and you as get a really parent, really engrossed into it, yeah, yeah. And as a parent, I can't do that. That is a no-no for me. I love role playing, but I, I, I will never. I cannot put it before all the responsibilities that I have. Mm-hmm. That's understandable. And I think that's why a lot more of the, um, the older, you know, I guess the adults. Um, are, are drawn back into tabletop because that is a structured role play environment. You meet at X time on X day, you mm. do role play for X amount of hours, and you can, you know, organize and schedule your own schedule around that. That works. Logging into World of Warcraft, any other MMO, voice role play, whatever, it is a bit of a crapshoot in the sense of you have to spend an unknown amount of time. To start a role play, which can last for another unknown amount of time, I I, I can't work with that nowadays. I need something I a little more structured. 
I have you have you ever gotten yourself into a situation where you feel like you can't get out of it because you did a because you did a yes and do you know what I'm talking about? Like you just oh, didn't yeah. say no to a situation and now you're mm-hmm. in another situation. Now you're too like you're too far in, you, and you can't get out. I think everyone has gotten themselves into that either unknowingly they just didn't know where the thing was leading to and they're like oh this has gotten this far or knowingly in the sense of you know what yeah let's see where this is going and by the time you realize you don't want in you're too far in i have gotten myself put into that situation with my guild wars 2 character Hmm. uh because i wanted to go check out the community see how things were going see how um see how the community was flowing after i had left some odd years ago and I'm happy to say that the Guild Wars 2 roleplay community is pretty much on the rise again, which I think is pretty cool. I think that has to do with the Living World roleplaying community, but I could be wrong. Um, with that said, I, my friend, I've been trying to like give myself less excuses to not do something. Um, and while I have plenty of excuses to not do do it like not do a certain something i am a father i have to go take care of my child Mm -hmm. i do have to work four 12-hour shifts i do have all this i have to work on so on and so forth i've been trying to like if it's like really so if it's like something small that i can handle i've been trying not to i've been trying not to say no to these things just so i can Mm -hmm. go out and be a part of the world more often um well my friend was like hey didn't you used to be a cook? And I was like, yeah, I, I, well, didn't you used to role play a bunch of characters who used to be cooks? Yeah, so uh, I did, I, I, I used to role play a whole bunch of different cooking characters. Like, I used to bartend in the hubs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I used to bartend in uh, the Blue Recluse all the time. <gasps> no way! What server? Uh, Warm Rest Accord. Uh, oh, no, I, I might have run into you. Oh, no. Oh, gosh, yeah. Oh, we... no. Yeah. Oh, it, it, no. it could have it could we could have role played at one oh point god you were probably a human weren't you i oh it really sort of depends on what character okay. i i role played uh i role played a worgen she she was a bartender she was a mute bartender um uh, who oh would just god. make people drinks um i also role played as a male Drenai who would bartend and he was like I'm here from uh, Exodar, learning ways of Stormland. And oh my god, I also played a male Drenai. Hell yeah. Mine was an uh, obnoxious hunter. Oh, uh, we actually oh, might have no. met. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, uh, and I also used to be you a- You know I too also... much, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's time to leave. Um, I also used to roleplay with the Stormwind University. So I used to have- Oh no, I remember- I used to, I used to, my, one of my characters used to be a professor with them. So one of, they were like, hey, did, weren't you a professor with one of your characters? I was like, yeah, I used to have experience. Oh, I have experience one of that. my characters, um, I don't want to say like an ad- adoptive daughter or whatever, uh, she would, she attended that university. Oh no. Uh, yeah, we probably oh, no. role played at one point together. Oh, no, I think I know you. The miracles of role play, baby. Oh, no. It's a smaller world than you think, people. <laughs> It really is. It can really In the be. end, you're never role playing with a stranger. Uh, true, true. Um, so what happened is all all said and done. Now I have a Guild Wars two character who who teaches uh, every Sunday and uh, who teaches cooking every Sunday, mm-hmm. and she's basically the the char equivalent of Gordon Ramsay, which is. <laughs> <laughs> Fan fucking tastic! How I got myself into this position, I don't know. And now mm-hmm. I'm I'm at that point where I'm like, well, I don't want to back out now because I just I just committed to this, and now I feel right. Bad. I think one of the a good piece of advice when people are either starting to role play or starting a character or got into those yes and situations is to think of an end or an exit for that character. You don't have to do it immediately. You don't have to plan the entire role play around it. But think about if I ever needed to leave this character, what would be a good in-character reason for them to no longer be around? Um, that way, if ever the necessity arises, you can depart with that character and people are going to be okay with it. There's closure to that. Or eventually, sometimes this happens as well with characters, they become stagnant. The storyline kind of fuzzes a little bit. There's no real direction or drive. And you're just kind of standing there not with no real direction really so having an idea of like this is my character's goal 
this would be like their end if they ever reach this goal. And working towards that gives your character always with purpose, with direction, with drive, and importantly, with end. I think characters do need some form of closure. If you play them forever, you're going to get bored with them. Other people are going to get bored with them. And you're going to end up either hating the roleplay or hating your own character. Yeah, that's and that's the worst feeling this week when you log into a character and like you feel like you have to log into this because you have like commitment or something on this character, right. and you just you hate this character now, mm -hmm. and you just you don't want to do it, but you still do it anyways because that character has friends, and you feel like those right. friends are dependent on your character and stuff like that. Like, I, I get that. Yeah. Uh, really, really quick. Um, do you since you and I used to be on the same server and we both role played Alliance? Mm -hmm. okay. Do you remember? The infamous Nyehehe. That sounds so familiar. I want to say... He used to yes. wear, like, a blue-purple robe, and he would walk around Stormwind, and he was this, quote-unquote, villain, right? And he would, like, twirl his mustache. He was a stereotypical old cartoons villain, mm -hmm. and, but he was homeless. And everyone... I want to say yes. Either that or a copycat character. Yeah, I... Oh, I miss, super, I miss super familiar. That, that's such a ring a bell. I remember the No Moran news. The they, yeah, I remember yeah, they that. Still, like, they did, like, the, the call-out, like, I think every once a week or something like that, and they would, like, yeah. yell out the news and all that. That was fun. That I was like pretty it when, cool. I like it when, when players, like, add life to the game, because any MMO, any role play, especially in, like, you know, through a video game, the developers can only give you so much. Mm -hmm. And it is up to the player to breathe life into the MMO. And it is such a great way to see players come up very creative ways to do so, either through their own, you know, role play. They make their own businesses. Um, they kind of add um, their own bits of headcanon that other players um, move with, et cetera. And I mean, <laughs> I'm going to sound like a boomer because back in the day, we had very little to work with. I don't know if anybody remembers early 2000s world of warcraft we had nothing okay nothing we have four 3d houses and a character with five basic moves and that was it and very very few things and we yeah. had to role play with that yeah and nowadays let me take a sip of my coffee <coughs> joking <laughs> and nowadays kids are all spoiled <laughs> they want housing <laughs> they want customization <laughs> Hold they on. want all this stuff or it's not a real MMO. Listen, I have been I Sorry. have I have been ranting. Like I just I don't I don't even care if they had housing to World of Warcraft at this point. I don't I just want them to get rid of the dumb language barrier. Like that's the only thing <laughs> I've been wanting from them for so long now. And I just you know, I missed out on the all the cross role cross uh faction roleplay, and I'm so mad about that. Oh, <laughs> I used to, um, I used to be a part of, um, do you, do you remember the red shirts? Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh I used God. to be, I used to be a part of a guild that would, uh, let out people who, uh, would like, if you need NPCs for a, like a certain event, I, I would help send out people to, mm -hmm. uh, to basically be red shirts. Um. And I I had a lot of fun with that because I got to do that on both sides of the fence, mm -hmm. um, uh, the fence being the 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 faction line. Yeah. Um, and another thing that I I really liked, I loved being a part of this. Um, I I wasn't really a part of the guild. I I think I kind of joined up at the, like the la like the tail end mm -hmm. of everything. But it was a guild that role played primarily in Booty Bay, and uh, it was cross faction. And I Ooh, love I I that. This. I yeah. love. But that they did so add much. the elixirs, right? Where you, yeah, they yeah. did. You have the elixirs. Yeah, they cost money, and they only last an hour. Well, okay, first of all, gold farming is not that difficult now. And uh, secondly, you know, chug. That's true. I don't that's know what to tell you. Chug. Sip. Because Sip. I know how you better chug. Because again. Back in the day, we didn't even have that. We didn't have elixirs. We didn't have any mods or add-ons that could do we didn't have Discord. If you wanted, to, yeah, we didn't have Discord. We had Ventrilo. We, we had Ventrilo, okay? <laughs> we had Ventrilo. And if you wanted to chat with somebody cross-faction, 
you would have to do it through Ventrilo, through chat. Okay? So, <laughs> be thankful for what you have. But it's always okay to ask for more. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I, I think that they... I really hope that we've kind of entered a time of peace in the World of Warcraft storyline. I am I am so actually tired. Pro, pro cross, I'm actually pro-war in World of Warcraft. Are you I really? Love, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. I oh, play man. both Horde and Alliance, and mm-hmm. every one of my characters is pro their faction. I love I, the war in Warcraft. That's, that's And fair. I want it to continue. I want to go back to the old days of um, faction war. Oh, man. Now you do sound like a boomer. I don't care. And I will stand by it. That was fun. <laughs> I loved it. it and I, I want to go back to it. That's fair. I I'm very much a I'm very much a person who I I'm I'm more of a I've been talking a lot about this on this channel. Um, I'm more of a cozy role player. I I like like things being cozy. I like things being peaceful. Of course, I, I like. If you want to do that, go to Final Fantasy fourteen. I did that too. I went there, a, but I, I, I played been as there well <laughs> in Final Fantasy fourteen. I think Final Fantasy fourteen is great if you want to play in a more cooperative sense. With different mm-hmm. factions, I think they did have like those different little factions you could join, get fun little colors and outfits, blah blah blah. But if I'm gonna play World of Warcraft, I want the faction war. That's what, what drew if... me to it in the first place, and I want to continue that. There is a fun aspect to it. That's fair. I um, how uh, how do you feel as someone who is pro pro war in the World of Warcraft? How do you feel about um how do you feel about the cross faction guilds now? Uh I understand it from a technical perspective. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, there are imbalances between horde and alliance between different um uh servers and yeah, that can cause issues. But uh from a lore perspective, I'm not a fan. Mm-hmm. So technical wise, I understand. Perfect. I think you're gonna resolve a lot of issues. Lore wise, nah. Nah, no, not, a, like not, not like a fan of I peace. just can't imagine a, a a character that has lived through so many wars, has been fed so much about, you know, their faction versus the opposite faction, and having to build up all of this. And then they turn around and go, Oh hey, by the way, guys, um that didn't matter. We're friends now. We're friends now. Yeah, we're friends now. We're going to work together. And for me, it's such a kick in the nuggets. Right? That I built a character that most of them are like soldiers. Again, they're very pro of their own faction, etc. And then be turned around and say, hey, you know all that, you know, death and strife you went through? Yeah, that, that doesn't count. That doesn't count for anything. We're, we're good now. Well, don't don't our soldiers have to, even in current day society, like, don't we have to, like, don't they have to deal with that themselves where it's like hey you went to war against these people but now we're no longer in war we're all buddy buddy do you think it's mm-hmm. do you think do you think it equates to basically being the same thing yes and no in the sense of i can see where the question is coming from but at the same time it is fact versus fiction we oh, are playing true. a fictional game and i mm-hmm. i do like that fictional war drive that's with fair the character. Uh, i can understand that yeah yeah, for me, it's, when I explained that, I explained it more from, like, a character's in-character perspective. If you went through all that. In the end, they do want peace, but I think they also want peace through winning. You've been fed that you need to fight to win. You need to fight to survive. So and here's... so when things are kind of just like, oh, hey, put your weapons down, nothing matters now. It kind of feels like all your efforts towards that kind of meant nothing. If they always had the power to do that, mm-hmm. to just cease fire whenever they needed to, I got you. So here's here's what I here's here's my here's what we're gonna do, right? Hmm. I'm gonna create an alliance guild. No, right. you create the you like alliance. You like alliance, right? Uh, I am pro horde. I do play alliance, but I'm horde, horde all the way. Okay, oh, so I'll make an alliance way, guild. I'll make an alliance guild. You'll make a horde guild, and we'll start. We'll just start. Fighting, we'll just start. We'll get this. We'll start. You cooking say that. that. You say that. But one of the most difficult things I found when I returned to to World of Warcraft was finding a pro faction guild. Really, I, the, I love PvP. 
I actually used to do competitive PvP when they first came out in Wrath of the Lich King. I had to stop because I'm too competitive and I, it would just get to me. And uh -huh. I, admittedly, I was the type of competitive person who I would lash out to my um, teammates if we uh -huh. didn't win. So I was like, you know what? That's not healthy. That's not good. I'm going to stop doing that. But I am yeah, very competitive. It's important to recognize that. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, very it's competitive. Important. Yeah. But um, when I came back and I wanted a, a, a guild, I wanted to I wanted a PvP guild, a role play PvP guild, which were very big back in the day. Oh yeah, back on uh, fuck, what was that guild? I was because uh, Warmer's Accord wasn't my very first server. It was Let me my guess, was it Moonguard? Server. No, Moonguard wasn't my Ooh. first server. I've actually oh. never. I I I have three characters on Moonguard because after the exodus from Warmer's Accord, I went to mm -hmm. I was gonna try to join everybody on Moonguard uh, when I came back to World of Craft, um, which. I still might do. I don't know. I'm a little afraid of Moonguard because of all the Moonguard stories. Um, I survived. You survived. I survived, uh, I survived. Moonguard. Um, but I, uh, I, I forget what the role playing server was. It was a role play PvP server. It was my very first server. That's the one that I played the human shaman on. Mm -hmm. And then everybody sort of, everybody in my guild went towards. Warm oh, what's it called? I think the one I played in, the roleplay PvP was like Lightning Hoof or Lightning Foot or something. I couldn't remember. It's been so long. Yeah. I can't remember. All I remember was all the times I tried to grab some ore and someone was like, ha, 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 stab. Right. Uh, oh, oh, God. Hold on. This, this leads me to my favorite story. I was standing outside of <clears throat> Wailing Caverns, mm -hmm. right? And I as wasn't roleplaying. <laughs> yeah, as one does. I was waiting on my teams to show up because it's not... Because you kids have it easy now. Right? It now you can just teleport. You have your own little app where you can just, I want to look for a group. Boop. Teleport it. No, back teleported. then you had to fucking, somebody had to run up there to the stone, had a second person run up there to the stone, and you had to wait for everyone else to show up or fucking summon them. There was yeah, effort. Pre <laughs> precisely. And then, oh, yeah. and then you hope one of them is a mage so they can send you back to where the fuck you mm -hmm, were. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Uh, so a Warlock. <laughs> I was standing outside of Wailing Caverns, which is fucking difficult when you're Alliance, mm -hmm. everybody. Um, and uh, I was sitting there list watching uh, Baron's chat, and then I'm watching, and I look at this, I look down, and there's a pet turtle, right? And it's mm -hmm. one of your companions, and I'm like, oh, little turtle. And I was like, that's pretty cool. And then I was like, wait, what? And then it was a rogue, and then that rogue killed me. <laughs> and... that's, that's funny, because like, it, it's, it's true, it's true. Because every time Alliance had to cross over to Wailing Caverns, you entered technically Horde territory. I know! And it was like as if the entire Barons just cried out, Fresh meat! Blood! <laughs> and, I, and I remember that. Man, going to Wailing Caverns used to be like such a nightmare, but you still had to do it mm -hmm. for, for some reason. I can't even remember the reason why you went to Wailing Caverns anymore. And I remember the trick to Wailing Caverns, which is to always stay left. Just, just keep yeah. heading left. Mm -hmm. And as long as you head left, you, you're going to fucking get there. Right. And, and, again, kids today, they didn't skip Wailing Caverns. No, you had to. It was the longest uh, dungeon at the time. And it would get you a lot of XP. You needed it for a lot of quests, etc. Like, it was a rite of passage to survive Wailing Caverns. Wailing Caverns, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I truly remember that. And as a tank, as a, as a tankadin, um, because my, my first character, while I did roleplay him as a shaman, he used to be a paladin. He was a, he was in class, in game, a paladin class. Um, and, um, oh, hold on one second. And there's my son. So, normally I put a mid-roll here, but I don't, I'm not gonna put a mid-roll in today. I want to instead just say, hey, you. Your face, it's wonderful, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it? You know what I mean. No, I'm coming! No, I'm coming! No, I'm coming back! No, I'm back! All right, welcome back. All right, where was I? Oh, yeah, as a tankadin, because I used to do the whole, I used to do the whole red tank paladin thing. Uh, that thing was... I remember tank. It was just such a nightmare to tank for that thing because if you didn't have a healer who mm -hmm. was like, if you if you had a healer that was like one of those "it's my way or the highway" type deals, and you yeah. had DPS who were like, "Well, it's also my way or the highway," <gasps> and you went into that sucker 
boy, were you in for a mm -hmm. time. I think we gave a bunch of people just PTSD remembering their Wailing Cavern days. And yeah, back then, healers were like do or die, and they had the tank by the balls. Because she went by the healer's pace. Because back then, the mana regeneration was crap. Was absolute shit. So you had to be chugging drinks and eating every other pull, etc. So it went at a snail's pace. It really did. It mm -hmm. really did. It was tough. So Anyways. all bow down to the mighty healer. <laughs> all bow down to the mighty healer. Uh, and then you would get to, oh, I remember you'd also get to situations where you're like, okay, we need a we need an off tank, or the hunter would like mm -hmm. pull everything. Oh, up. God, the fucking hunter pet too. Oh, because the hunters pets didn't have stealth at the time, and no, they had not. their own like routing path. No. And you could just feel your blood turn to ice when you saw the peripheral of your eye on the screen. The fucking hunter pet, usually a boar at this time, yeah. just go through the top pathway pulling every fucking mob knowing it's oh. going to come to you and you're just going through the five stages of grief at once <laughs> until you reach acceptance and die you know it's, I, 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 I forgot all about this until you mentioned it and it's just like coming <laughs> back in waves it's like just you just know in slow motion. <laughs> just you know what sucks? <laughs> Barons has Barons had three fucking instances in it, three mm -hmm. goddamn instances in it, and it it sucked. They all sucked. They were awful. Because it was it was so difficult to get to like like you had to you had to go from Gadget Zan or uh you had to go from either it was either Gadget Zan. Or the one, I forget what it's called, uh, the Goblin Town in Barrens. I forget what that's called. Um, oh, oh, God. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about, though. It'll yeah, come and to me 20 minutes later. Yeah, and either to run through the Thousand, uh, thousand Needles. Um, mm -hmm. That or... one wasn't flooded, kids, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I thought it wasn't flooded. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, which, is a, which was a high PvP zone at the time, by the way. To um, Or you had to run from that one place. And hope you got there. Because, by mm -hmm. the way, Wailing Cavern, as an Alliance player, was right next to a Horde uh, town. Yep. And they mm -hmm. would sit there and wait for you. And yep. if you... That's, and that's the reason why I left the PvP I say yes server. because I did that. <laughs> that's, that's the reason why I left PvP. Mm -hmm. I like PvP. I like PvP when I want my PvP. So I left my PvP servers. Right. But you have to admit, like you said, you like PvP, and there is a fun aspect to PvP. Oh, yeah. I understand now that, you know, Warcraft is changing. It is more reaching its resolution. You know, I'm speaking about, like, things must come to an end. This is probably part of it. However, I do miss the days when it was um, a faction war. Oh, yeah? When you did have to risk your character eventually crossing into the enemy faction line, which Horde had to do it in Ashenvale to get to that, um, that, I, it was a dungeon that had the Naga in it, and I can't recall. It was an underwater one. But Horde had is to do it the, the same. One, yeah. Is it the one that was over in, um. By the, by the shore. By the shore. I know which one you're talking about. God, right. that's all. That was also right? one of the ones that, that was on the was, trip. Right. And you had to cross through the entirety of Ashenvale through it. Yeah, that's which right. Which was terrifying. Because, you know, Night Elves, they were almost all rogues. They all, they had that um, that racial where they could just disappear regardless of their class, etc. Mm -hmm. it, Ashenvale was a PvP nightmare. And it was difficult to traverse. They had mobs everywhere. At least the Barrens is open. At least you have space. And you didn't have that in Ashenvale. It was full of trees. You couldn't hide. You couldn't run. Every other corner of a tree had a mob in it. You know? Yeah. Or the NPCs yeah. that used to, like, um, patrol up and down the roads. Awful. So, I, Horde had to go through the same thing. But there was something fun about that, too. When you had to, like, sneak through and, and get to the other side. It wasn't about just getting to the dungeon. It was about making it. It was also about killing a few people along the way. It's like, I know uh, you're trying to stop me, but you're not. And then, and then, Death Knights fucking came out. Yeah. And when 
Death Knights came out, they took over fucking everything. I Everywhere. Quite, I quite vividly remember getting like making my Death Knight and going toward uh going to um uh what's it called in uh Burning Crusade, the very first zone. Uh in Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And r- something <sighs> rage ah, I, but the but the mm-hmm. first uh instances that you get there. I mm-hmm. quite vividly remember my my team being nothing but death knights. Oh, Literally I remember that too. I, I still played like my my priest and my warrior and my hunter, and I'm looking around like, huh, I'm the only non death knight in here. Yeah, <laughs> okay. and I remember. I remember. I was like, okay, we got the we got the tank death knight, and we got uh, everybody else. Yeah. One of us is gonna be tank, and the other is gonna be nothing but. But I do remember they were they were OP as hell though. When they were and first you could released? Lear- yeah, you could literally have an entire group of Death Knights without a healer, and their self-healing was so insane, you didn't need a healer. Right! Oh my god, I did a raid with nothing but Death yeah. Knights. And it was it so, it was so yeah. fun. <laughs> it was bizarre. It felt wrong. But you could, felt, you could do it. It's so forbidden. It really does. Like, oh, this isn't right. I'm, I'm like breaking a cardinal sin somewhere. <laughs> we don't have a healer? Oh, oh. I know, and I played a I played a Blood Death Knight when they came out, um, and that oh, Blood and Death PvP, Knight that was just, stupid. That was that, stupid. That hated was Death Knight. great. Hated, yeah, no, right? Because you play a Blood Death Knight, but when I had to go against like a Blood Death Knight, I was like, this is. I threw my hands in the air, like, fuck it. The maggots are healing him, and the mm-hmm. spillies are healing him, and he's killing me, and I can't kill him. I remember the he's... forums just blowing up, like nerf the Death Knights, nerf the Death Knights, and I agreed. <laughs> I I understand why people wanted them nerfed. I don't blame them, but They're I do miss the power it. trip. <laughs> I, I think do. And that's also about like true about every class. Every class has their ups and downs. And when it's your turn, your class is starting to have their OP up. It is great. Enjoy it. Please enjoy it while it lasts. Because I remember when like uh, Resto Druids in Wrath were stupid, and I played a Resto Druid. And I remember doing the uh, what's it called winter cell or the outside PvP um, area mm-hmm. with the tanks and you have to destroy the buildings blah blah blah. And I partner up with the gnome rogue. We oh, were fucking God. unstoppable. Just God. two of us taking down oh, everything. Man. And as a resto druid, even if I was sapped, even if I was locked, I couldn't die. And that's, it was great. It was great. It lasted. <laughs> That's one of the coolest. Okay, so in even with the aspect, of, especially with the aspect of PvP, but also with the aspect of role playing, mm-hmm. when you had a friend, and you and that friend just understood and you clicked, and your yes. characters clicked, and you guys mm-hmm. knew what the fuck to do. God, that is such a good that is feeling. Mm-hmm. Like when, that's the thing. When we didn't you... start as role playing friends. Um, that Noam Rogue and I, we started as you know just. PVPers, we just happened to coincide often enough. When I saw his name, I'm like, hey, it's my buddy. And we just kind of hung out in the PVP areas. And eventually we started just role playing in and out of the PVP areas. And yeah, it was great because of that understanding of our roles as we PVP, what he was supposed to do versus what I was supposed to do, and helping each other out mutually. And then taking that back with you into role play, say in a tavern, a city, et cetera, and building up from there. I think it's one of the few times that ever happened. I haven't had it since. And I still remember it very fondly. I used to, uh, another guild that I knew of, that I, I knew people in, and that I would join with uh, when they went to PvP. There was a guild called We PvP for RP. And oh. I I used to join them all the time for, our, well, some of my friends in the guild to go PvP. Yeah. I do like PvP. I just, like I said earlier, I just, I prefer my PvP when I get that. When I when I want my PvP, do you know what I mean? I just I yeah. don't have the I don't have the time or the patience for it today. <laughs> I just I just get too competitive. Uh, again, I had to like stop that and because mm-hmm. I would just get mad if I didn't win. Oh, I was okay, I, and I don't okay. So I understand exactly where you're coming from because you mm-hmm. you're trying so hard, and you it's are. just like if the player would just stop taking the fucking mm-hmm. flag over into this goddamn area where all the other players right. are. Right, and I knew it because I was good. I played a, a warlock back when um, they had like the teams, the mm-hmm. the two Vs, the three Vs, and all that. Mm-hmm. And I played a warlock, and also warlocks were very powerful back then. And again, 
very competitive PvP player. Everything was built around PvP, and I, I liked winning. Everybody likes winning. Who doesn't like winning? Yeah. So when you put your 100% into everything and you still lose, it's a special kind of hurt. And yeah. as much as, you know, I took the blame for like, oh, shit, we could have done this. I could have done that, you know. And I also just snapped at my other, I mean, my teammates. I was like, why didn't you do this? You could help me with this, blah, blah, blah. And after a while, it's like, oh, this is uh, this is not healthy. I'm not in oh. a good uh, space. Oh, man. I should probably stop. I should probably stop oh. peeping. There's a, there's a chance you might have made me cry in the, in, in the week. Probably. <laughs> probably. But, so, but I still enjoy it. I, right. don't, I don't shy away from PvP. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I do remember back in the days, back in Moonguard, I don't know if I'm going to, you know, uh, not, not trigger, but like somebody might remember the Sun Guard. This was a very big roleplay PvP Blood Elf deal back in the day. And we did big roleplay PvP events, like guild versus guild type. Mm -hmm. I loved it. It was absolute chaos. If you didn't have a computer for it, you would just see three seconds of something moving and then just color and another three oh, seconds. It was awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. FPS uh, was killed. killed. My my first computer ever. And mm -hmm. this is going to sound so bad. And this is honestly another reason why I kind of got into role playing in MMO because it was like, oh, I like doing this and it doesn't kill my computer. Right. Um, my computer, my very first computer was a computer I dug out of the trash near a dumpster. And I took it home and I fixed it the best I could. It was absolute garbage, but it could <laughs> run World of Warcraft as long as I wasn't doing something too extraneous. Right? <laughs> when Burning Crusade came around, thankfully, because I, I didn't have to deal with it long, uh, but when Burning Crusade came along soon after, I uh, was able to uh, get, like, I had a job, and I was mm -hmm. like, I can get my own parts and stuff now, yay! And I was able to fix it up to be a little bit better, but I had that computer for, like, three years, yeah. and it was just such a piece of crap. <laughs> I remember it so fondly. <laughs> <laughs> because it got you through it. Like, it, it chugged along a little computer that could it with was. shit FPS. But it I got know. you there. It shouldn't it have existed. It shouldn't have done it, but it did. It did. Anyway, and it gave you the drive and motivation to just get something better. You know, shout yeah. outs to everyone's first rinky dink shit computer. shit computer. It got you to where you are today. If your computer is powered by one hundred potatoes, be proud mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Um, we are coming up on our hour real oh, quick. I know. Nice. I know it's it's always the same. I I'm always like I don't know why, but as a podcaster, as someone who likes to talk to people, I always get super anxious when I'm about to talk to somebody. I have no idea why, and then the hour is just over like that. I know, my goodness. Um, but um, if uh, ranting us us <laughs> ranting about the good old days aside, <laughs> is there? Is there any advice that you feel mm -hmm. you would like to tell the role players out there? Anybody? It doesn't matter if, if oh, you goodness. feel like, if, if it's like beginner advice, if it's like personal advice or whatever. Um, I'm probably going to be repeating a lot of things that other people have said in the past. Um, role play is not about winning. Mm -hmm. It's not about your character being the best. It's not about your character being the most popular or well liked. It's not about you, whether your head cannons make it into actual canon or not. Role play is what you make of it. And if you feel your role play is shit or bad, you're on the right track. You have to suck at something to be better at it. Yeah, so, that's true. I know a lot of people feel intimidated by role play. They're like, oh my god, these people are so much better than me. Their characters are so much more developed than mine. I don't know where to start. And that's good. Because that's where every role player has started. Yeah. Yeah. I can't I can't even re remember the first time I started getting into World of Warcraft roleplay. Like, mm -hmm. the first time I got into MMO roleplay. And, but I can probably promise you... I can't... No, I can definitely promise you. I was probably a nervous wreck. Because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you're gonna piss people off. And you're gonna and do this. Gonna you're gonna happen. do that. But... Yeah. Yeah. And there's a role play for everybody. Whether it's going to be MMO, whether it's going to be voice, whether it's going to be text, whether it's going to be tabletop, there's a role play for you. Absolutely. So, much like a buffet, try everything. Try a little bit of everything. You might have something you really like. You might have something that's not to your taste. But it'll be fun just to try. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks so much for having me. 
And that's all we got today. As always, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. Please come join the Discord. Feel free to say hi or just lurk. It's okay. I'm just happy to surround myself with people who love this weird hobby. If you enjoyed this episode, please, by all means, leave me a, leave a comment. Let me know how I did. Let me, what, let me know what you liked about it and what you didn't like about it. Um, I do truly appreciate constructive criticism, so, you know, if that's something that you want to do, please give it to me. And, uh, yeah, have yourself a wonderful week, everybody. I'll see you next Wednesday.